Uh, the first piece was How the Rhino Got His Skin, a one-woman puppet show where I tied the various puppets to my body, <laughs> which was a huge mistake. So the lights came up on the stage, and you know I had performed before as a dancer, and I also did theater in Seattle. Um, and so I was no stranger to the stage, but the lights come up and my hand started to shake. <laughs> And, and the lights hit the, uh, caught the strings. And so all anybody could see, I blinded the audience with these vibrating lit strings <laughs> that I couldn't get off. <laughs> um, so marionettes are very, you have to empathize with them. You have to be practiced. Manipulating a marionette well is, is an art form. It's like dance. I'm very proud of the fact that they're working marionettes, so they, they have an uninterrupted skeletal structure on the inside. As an artist, my figure structure classes at the U taught me the structure of the bones of a body, and the puppets have that. Their spines are buttons with beads so that they have this articulation, but they won't crunch down onto themselves, which is, I mean, that's a huge part of what working with these traditional marionettes is about. The parameters of puppeteering are so wide open that nobody, I mean, what can they say about what I do and how I do it? <laughs> there are practical elements to it that I certainly have learned. I know it's important that the puppet not fall apart on stage, but aside from that, no one really knows how to critique it. No, you know, they can't be critical in the same way that they can with painting, for example which is part of what makes it so fun, is that I can't help but go out on a limb. If I just start working, it, it goes out on a limb on its own, which is, I love that. I love that about the medium, that you are exploring, that you're trying to kind of push things. As a painter, I was taught that your work is supposed to have an edge to it of some kind, and uh, there are a lot of theories about that. The puppets have an edge to them because they're freaky. When things start to animate that don't normally animate, <laughs> people, you know, they're a little weirded out by that, so they have this automatic edge. No matter what medium I'm working in, the obstacles rear their ugly heads pretty much right off the mark, you know, and they have all these things that can go wrong. So I have to constantly take these things apart and pack them around and then put them back together quickly and on stage. And it's a miracle that any of these things ever make it onto the stage, but they always seem to. That classic uh, axiom, the show must go on, uh, is so true. It, it has to, it's like, it's inevitable. You know, you start these pieces and then as you're working them and eating and breathing and waking up in the night and you know working them and working them and dealing with all the logistics of everything uh, they transform and continue to transform and then they're performed you know perseverance is the keynote of an artistic life you just keep getting back on the horse <laughs> and don't be scared uh, it, the leap of faith paintings came out of it I did a whole series of figures jumping off of a cliff <laughs> into nothing. The leap of faith that you have to take, jumping into saying that you're a painter, saying that you're a puppeteer, saying that you're anything, 